It's been a while since we last explored Vector Shift, but we're back with exciting news, a major platform update. For the people who are unfamiliar, Vector Shift is an agent framework that allows you to build generative AI apps and workflow automations without writing a single line of code. It features a no-code interface where you can create AI workflows using a modular component called Nodes. In short, it's an all-in-one platform for building AI-powered apps, chatbots, as well as automations. Now, with this latest update, VectorShift has made AI workflow creation even easier with the simplified UI for a more intuitive experience. You have new components to enhance node capabilities, integration with top-tier AI models like DeepSeq R1, and so much more. In today's video, we're going to be exploring specifically on creating DeepSeq R1 agents that are powerful AI agents that can automate almost anything. Along with that, we're also going to be exploring the latest platform updates in detail. So with that thought, let's just jump right into it. Before we get started with creating the agents, you may wonder why even use the DeepSeq R1 model and why even create agents based off of it? Well, if you're not familiar with this model, it is a powerful new open source AI model designed to perform at the same levels as OpenAI's O1 model, where it actually beats its other model, GPT-4 Omni, on almost every benchmark test, as well as Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It offers a significant performance boost, especially with minimal labeled data, it's cheaper, and it is released under the MIT license, which allows users to freely distill, commercialize, and leverage the model for various applications. And essentially, if you use this as a backend for your agent, it's a smart choice because these agents can automate complex tasks in areas like coding, math, problem solving, and many others. So now that we know why we should use the DeepSeq R1 model, head over to VectorShift, and I want you guys to get started by clicking on this button, which will prompt you to sign up or sign in with a VectorShift account. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis, so this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. After you sign up or log in, you're then going to be sent over to the main pipeline dashboard. This is essentially where you can manage all your chatbots, automations, forms, voice bots, and you can actually specifically target each one of those on the left hand panel where you can specifically check out your voice bots that you create or your chatbots and as well as bulk jobs. There's different types of options of what you can create. You also have the ability to evaluate various sorts of creations as well as manage your transformations but what we're going to do now is simply create a new pipeline from scratch and we're going to essentially showcase how you can set up everything we're going to create a pipeline from scratch but one thing that i'll note is that you have the ability to also select predefined templates to different automations chatbots as well as other contents like voice bots or bulk jobs Essentially, these are different types of ready-made templates that you can easily adopt with various integrations already configured for you. But for us, we're going to start from scratch. You'll then be sent over to the main drag and drop builder. And this is something that has gotten a new look and it has been upgraded to have a simplified UI and to have a more intuitive experience. On the top, you'll see different types of nodes from large language model to knowledge base and so many other different types. These are different nodes that will help you build any sort of uh, AI agent, chatbot, voice bot, and so many other options. Now, for any workflow to be operational, you'll need to make sure that you place down an input node and an output node. So essentially, every time you place down any type of node, whether that's a large language model node, knowledge base node, or an integration, they're always going to have an output to that specific node. And the reason why is because this is a new type of output format that makes it easier for you to connect other types of nodes. So from connecting one node to another node, you would use the output function or that format within that node to connect other types of nodes easier. I know it's a little hard to understand right now, but you'll get a better idea of it as we showcase this demo. But essentially what we're going to be creating is a knowledge base that has the ability to provide our users context of what my channel is about. Essentially, it's going to be a chatbot with different AI agents deployed into it, and it's going to assist anyone 
with questions as well as helping you book meetings and assist you with any sort of general query that you might have about my channel. So we're going to go ahead and create a knowledge base first and then we're going to place down a large language model node. Click on create a new knowledge base. You would simply give it a name and then you can go ahead and click create and you can go ahead and upload different files or you can even go ahead and add integrations through different types of apps. You have a lot of flexibility in different types of ways you can add uh, data or any sort of information from. Now leave this field blank for now as we're going to then use it to help us connect the input and the output afterwards. But next we're going to go ahead to the large language model section and then we're going to click on open source. And the reason why is because this will allow us to use the DeepSeq R1 model, which is going to be powering up this workflow. So what we're going to do now is give it a system prompt. I gave it the system prompt saying that you are a helpful chatbot for my YouTube channel called World of AI. I'm telling it to help different users on answering questions. Now to make this all complete, we're going to go over to the chat tab and place down a chat memory node for essentially having memory infused into our chatbot. So we essentially have all the different nodes that will be needed to have this chatbot functional. But how do you connect them? And this is where we now go back to this output field within every node. Essentially, what you can do is head over to the prompt tab in every chat uh, interface. And what you can do is you can place down two squiggly nodes or two squiggly brackets, and you can have it so that you can select different types of nodes to connect everything. In this case, if you hover over a certain type of node, it will highlight it. So in this case, you can connect the input node to the open source large language model node. And then you can also have it so that the knowledge base is then connected to this large language model node. The prompt is where you can connect all of these different types of variables. So you would want to place on a squiggly bracket for each sort of node. And essentially that's what I did. For inputs coming in to my chatbot, I want it so that it will be processed by the large language model in terms of taking the question and then having it so that it also references the knowledge base, which is the context in this section, to provide the answer based off the context that I created with my knowledge base. And then I also want to connect it to the history to utilize the chat memory feature. But we have the left side section now figured out, but we're going to go ahead and now have it so that there's a search query. And what you want to do for this case is you want to have it inputted to the question that is asked. So you want to then connect it to the input node, and then you want to have it so that the output is going to be text. Now that we have this section now figured out, what you can do is you can easily just drag and drop this output node so that it could go ahead and give us a response, which is going to be the output from the large language model. And essentially, we have our chatbot workflow fully created. Now, what you can also do is go over to integrations and say if you want it so that you can automate something like sending out uh, emails with this AI agent, you can then place it on a Gmail node and then you can have it so that it could be to create an email draft, send an email or draft something uh, that is going to be a reply. You can also have it so that you can book meetings with different integrations like Cal or other meeting apps like Google Meets. And this way you can then have it so that queries are processed through your chatbot and then it will then have it so that the AI agents can go ahead and execute something like creating an email or booking a slot on your calendar. But now that we have this workflow fully created, what we're going to do is simply click on deploy changes. And what you can do is you can simply go ahead and deploy it without even you intervening. And once that is done, you can go over to export and you can go over and export it as a chatbot. Give this a chatbot name. So we'll just name it world of AI. And then what you can do is you can customize your chatbot appearance. So not only does it allow you to create the functionality, but it also gives you a chance to design how your chatbot looks. So you can configure how it looks, add your logo, and you can basically configure all of these different styling uh, details. And once that is done, and once you have figured out what you want to do with the styling, you can then click on export, and then you can have it so that you can open this up as a URL, add authentication like a password, or you can integrate it to something like Slack, WhatsApp, or then export the API. 
So let's go over and open this up as a link. And then you can ask it, what is world of AI? And then you can send it in and you'll see that it's going to reference our knowledge base. So you can see it's talking about the channel. And since this is a reasoning model, it takes a bit more longer to generate your answer as it's thinking to get you the most precise and concise answer. And then you can see that there's related questions that you can ask what topics are covered in the YouTube channel. And then you can see it talks about all the different types of uh, videos that I focus on. But that's essentially a gist of how I was able to deploy AI agents and create my own chatbot with VectorShift. This is just the top, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to VectorShift and I definitely recommend that you take a look at it with the links in the description below as you can easily build any sort of agent with different large language models like DeepSeek R1. I'll leave a link to whatever I use in today's video in the description below. Follow me on the Patreon, follow me on Twitter, and lastly, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out our previous videos so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.